Prepare yourself for the hour is finally upon us. That's right, hour of devastation is soon to launch. And that means one thing and one thing only. Awesome Magic the Gathering cards, not only entering standard, but entering the hands of all other formats. And therefore, we are going to look at the top five reprints for Hour of Devastation. Coming in at number five is Sandblast. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a common that we haven't seen since uh, Fate Reforged. Yay! Got, got that reprinted finally. A and at number four, it's Kindled Fury, another common. <laughs> but we haven't seen this one since Dragons of Tarkir, so great to have it back again. Traveler's Amulet, that, that's been gone since Theros, so the price has gotten to a whopping seven cents each instead of six. Finally, a needed reprint in Hour of Devastation. Manolith, it's another common. I, Manolith, it was printed in M12 uh, core set. So that's, that's great because we don't have core sets anymore and now we finally have cards that were in core sets. At, wh what's that? Oh, they, they brought back core sets now that, so right. I bet you cash Manolith will be in the first core set that returns. And the number one reprint for Hour of Devastation is Unsummon. <laughs> Can you believe it's been nearly five years since we saw Unsummon, an alpha card, reprinted? I can't believe I'm actually excited about it. Why are they all commons? You know what? Let's just do the top five commons for the popper format. New ones that have been made that are going to shake up that great format known as popper. Presented here are the top five common cards from Hour of Devastation that are likely to see play and shape the format of Popper. And if you are interested in Popper, be sure to check out our Popper, the Popper subreddit that has got an awesome community of people that will help you get started in and discussing the best budget format in Magic the Gathering. Coming in at number five, our list will go on and on, but will this card go on in Popper? I think so, and that card is Life Goes On. Life Goes On is a mere one green mana for an instant that reads, you gain four life. If a creature died this turn, gain eight. Wow, eight life instead. I almost debated making this an honorable mention, but the pickings for Popper are a little slim anyway, and I think Life Goes On offers green decks just enough to ensure it will see play, if only as a sideboard staple. Now the saying goes that you don't win the game by gaining life, but eight sure gives a headache to any burn opponents or, of course, just aggro-heavy decks sitting opposite you. The real comparison here is to Feed the Clan, where for a little bit more mana, you gain one more life. Unless, of course, you have Ferocious in play, in which case you'll gain 10 instead of 8. It's a number cruncher that only time will tell on. Do we want one less mana for 4 life instead of 5? Is the Morbid Trigger going to be better or worse than Ferocious? As far as I'm concerned, I think this card is going to go on and live in the sideboard, while Feed the Clan ends up starving in the bulk bin. Coming in at number four is a lesson. Unfortunately, it is a tragic lesson, and oh my god, look at that art! Kefnet, is he okay? Is... is... no? Oh my goodness, he's sleeping. Shh, shh, shh. Tragic lesson is two and one blue mana for an instant that reads, draw two cards. Then, discard a card unless you return a land you control to its owner's hand. The first card of comparison here is Gush, a solid pauper staple. Are we going to replace Gush with Tragic Lesson is the question. Well, Gush requires you to only return islands, whereas the Tragic Lesson is one that allows us to return any land, including utility lands. Pajuka Bog springs to mind. Although situationally, gain lands or maybe a Radiant Fountain could be a nice bump as well. I have this lower on our list because while I think it will see some play, it is likely not going to be more than a one of in very specific 
decks, possibly getting into those that are not on mono blue and avoid gush for lack of basic islands. Nonetheless, Tragic Lesson is far from a tragic addition to our popper options. Coming in at number three is a card that rewards anyone in Grixis colors that have stayed faithful despite their being in white. And that, of course, is God Pharaoh's Faithful. God Pharaoh's Faithful is a card that costs only one white mana for a 0-4 human wizard, which reads, whenever you cast a blue, black, or red spell, you gain one life. So right off the bat, we have a creature that can survive lightning bolts. It drops early game if you're lucky, maybe even turn one. And with four toughness, this is offering good blocks. But of course, more than anything, it is the life gain off of any Grixis spells that is the key to this card. Soul Sisters and Mono White Life Gain strategies already exist and do very well in Popper, but this card may lead about control life gain strategies. New decks, and I always love when that is a possibility. I mean, you need not even be in all three Grixis colors, just an Azurius or Esper controlled build, where your life gain is part of the long-term game plan. Some might even create a new way to combo off of this, although thankfully, familiar combo is long gone along with Cloud of Fairies and Drake. The biggest weakness here is that you'll also need your deck to have reliable targeted removal for flyers. Delvers are still common as ever, but in control builds, that is an option, and so I think this is going to see some solid play. Now, I indeed gasped at the art for Tragic Lesson, but coming in at number two happens to be a card that I think has the number one, the absolute best art in the entire set not just commons, but of all cards, and that, of course, is the Striped Riverwinder. Looking like something out of Borderlands or a comic book, Striped Riverwinder is six and a blue for a 5-5 hexproof with cycling for one blue. This card is going to make a huge impact in Popper because this is a threat that is next to impossible to remove. Dies to removal? N no, not really. Your only hope here is for edict effects, but that's really a dubious challenge challenge if ever I saw one. Best of all is the built-in strategy cycling for one blue brings with it. Never mind pitching this if it's a dead card in your hand. No, pitch it on turn one for the cycling and then turn two, exhume it. A 5-5 hexproof turn two is going to be the bane of your enemies. And I think there's some other strategies open here, such as cycling this using something like Pulse of Marasa and a Simic build. Although again, I gotta repeat, you're not going to win many games just by gaining life. And I think it's truly Demir decks with reanimation strategies where this is going to find a home. Or possibly be in blue Tron builds, however, in those Tron decks, you're going to be asking if you'd rather have, at the same cost of seven, a Mall Splicer or the faithful Ulamog's Crusher. And so it may not get adopted there, but this is absolutely going to find homes elsewhere. All right, coming in at number one is a card long banned in Popper, and that, of course, is Grape Shot. I, oh, wait, what? Well, okay, it's not quite Grape Shot, but it's Grape Shot on a stick. Firebrand Archer. Firebrand Archer is a 2-1 human archer for one and a red that reads. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Firebrand Archer does one damage to each opponent. The first card that seems to come to a lot of people's minds is actually Thermo Alchemist, which taps to ping opponents for one and then untaps for instant or sorcery spells. There's some differences here, as Alchemist is a 0-3 wall, so the debate is whether you want to add to Alchemist strategies with the archer, or possibly to replace it entirely. Do you want to be able to swing in for two with the archer or instead have a defender at three toughness like you do with Thermo Alchemist? That's the question. And while I think that is a fair debate and likely weighted more towards Archer over Alchemist, what appeals to me more about this card is how it is essentially a grape shot on a stick. Storm builds rejoice over this addition. Its only weakness is that, like most things on a stick, it needs to resolve and stick, pun intended, to the field before storming can go off. Nonetheless, this is a card that screams popper power and the absolute number one card for which the format is likely going to have an impact and see play. And so while Hour of Devastation was not one for reprints, for commons, Popper sees some real power plays that may have a role in the future of the format. And Popper is growing like crazy, seeing more and more play in paper. So remember, 
If your local game store is looking to hold popper events, try and encourage this as it's the best budget format there is. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or just by leaving a comment. Are there any commons in Hour of Devastation that I didn't mention that you think are going to have a significant impact in Popper? Let me know in the comments below. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you.